are you going to ask after Bobby was killed? Why didn't they run in his place? What would you have done? I don't know if you were me and he was your brother, what would you have done? I'd quit, leave Washington, never look back, which is exactly what I did. That's from the new movie Chappaquiddick, which opens tonight. It was the night that ended a young woman's life and Ted Kennedy's White House aspirations. This telling wire copy was one of the first headlines that next day. It read, Ted Safe, Blonde Dies. The blonde had a name, of course, Mary Jo Kopechny. She was a staffer for Bobby Kennedy, and her family says they feel this movie finally shows her as she was, a bright young woman whose life had a promising future that was snuffed out when Senator Kennedy fled the scene. In a new op-ed, they write this, quote, Mary Jo Kopechny was not a wide-eyed Capitol Hill staffer. She was a seasoned idealist with big ambitions. When you realize who she really was, the tragedy is greater. To this day, speculation continues about the circumstances surrounding her death, including why Kopechny's body was discovered in the back seat area of the car and why another woman's purse was also recovered from that car. I recently sat down with Georgetta Petoskey, Mary Jo's cousin and close confidant, and the author of the book, Our Mary Jo. What goes through your mind reliving this story and watching it on the big screen? It was very powerful. Mm -hmm. It was very emotional, and it was very sad. Um, but we did like the movie. We thought they did a masterful job with it. I thought Jason Clark was, well, you really thought mm -hmm. you were watching Ted Kennedy, and Kate Mira was darling and sweet. And I think it captured Mary Jo's personality. And I think they find, uh, at the same time, they, they walked a fine line with some of the scenes so that not to imply um, the wrong thing. And we appreciate that because Mary Jo was a, a woman full of integrity and intelligence and ambition. And we still miss her to this day in yeah. our family. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. She uh, was from an area not far from where I live. Um, and I can imagine that the loss is, is still so enormous for you to this day. I know you have a lot of questions about Ted Kennedy's role in all of this and just what they were even doing in, in that car together in the first place, right? Well, when we first heard that he was, uh, he said that he was taking her to the ferry to catch the last ferry, well, I believed that because Mary Jo would not have stayed overnight on the island. She would have wanted to go home. And so it seemed perfectly natural for us that they would be trying to catch the last ferry. And having lived in New England, we know that most ferry lines stop at midnight. Right. So when he said they left the uh, cottage at 11.15 and were going to catch the last ferry, that made sense to us, at least at the time that uh, this was all uh, happening. Yeah, you know, when you watch the movie and you see those behind-the-scenes machinations of the Kennedy clan getting together, really focused on trying to save Ted Kennedy's integrity, trying to save uh, the Kennedy name and all of that. We tell the truth, or at least our version of it, and it ends with an appeal to the voters, to the people that elected me. We need to remind them that this family perseveres, that we don't back down from a fight, that we don't get backed into a corner. We have a true compass and we follow it. I can imagine that you're just sitting there wondering, you know, what about Mary Jo? That, that was hard to watch, but uh, not unknown to most people who lived through the Kennedy era. Uh, most politicians have those uh, types of personal family meetings uh, to negotiate st strategy, and, uh, uh, but it was a little hard. We, we kept thinking that he would uh, make a right decision. But And he had plenty of chances to do that. He just didn't do it. There's a suggestion that she didn't drown, that she suffocated, and that she was alive for a long time in that car. I, I, I wonder what you think about that. That's one of the hardest things we had to accept. Her parents, in particular, thought that she had 
uh, died instantly. And a few years after she died, they went up there and spoke with uh, John Ferrer, the scuba diver, and he told them she could have lived up to three hours in the air bubble in the car, and it was like they had lost her all over again. Uh, her father in particular just grieved. It was awful. It was awful. I can imagine. You know, you know. In terms yeah. of the movie, there's some discussion now that there was an effort to suppress it. That some supporters of the family didn't want it to come out. Um, does that surprise you? Well, yeah, there's always been a lot of suppression of books and stories, and uh, this is the first time almost 50 years that the movie is being made. And uh, when we saw the the film. The scenes that they had uh, photographed were just like the scenes that had been running through our heads for 50 years. So they did a great job. Do you remember, you know, learning this, this news? It must have been such an enormous shock, obviously, for you and your family. Did, were you even aware that she was out there that night? No, no, I was not. Uh, my husband was in the Navy when we were living in uh, North Kingston, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And it was a Sunday morning that the phone rang, and I was folding diapers. I had three little girls. And um, Bill, my husband, took the phone call, and I heard him say, Mary Jo, that's too bad. And I knew she was dead. Mm -hmm. And he came in the room, and he said, Mary Jo has died in a swimming accident in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I said, what happened? He said, I don't know. No one knew actually what had happened for the whole week that uh, the funeral was taking place. Um, the Capetchenes, Mary Jo's mother and father, uh, had had a very brief discussion with the Kennedy people that said, more or less, if you just calm down and uh, take it easy and we'll meet afterwards and we'll tell you everything about what happened. So they just, they were destroyed anyway, and they were not in any position to have any long, complicated conversations. Yeah. So we just got through with the wake and the funeral and the burial the best way we could, and then we waited. Georgetta, thank you very much uh, for joining us. I'm glad that you and your family feel that this portrayal of her is closer to the Mary Jo that you knew. Uh, and I thank you very much for sharing your story with us tonight. Certainly.